getting hot all the time. So on the main straights, I slow down, you know. Tactics for second lap. I'm going to take it one car at a time until I get to the front. Okay, we've seen a number of the four-wheelers in terms of the motorcar categories, but now the four-wheelers, the quads, the motorcycles, interesting category, and perhaps made famous in recent weeks by Vickers van Deventer at the Paris-Dakar, Kenny. Yeah, it was unbelievable what they managed to do to finish the event and to actually win the, the quad category. It was unbelievable uh, for a first time out. It was great. Just remind us, the quads, it looks like a motorcycle. It's almost a car. It takes a special person to ride it. Yeah, you really have to be super fit. The guys, uh, as you'll see, the track is very narrow on these things. It's not the same track as a car. So the guys are driving one wheel in the middle monarchy, as it were, and one wheel in, this, uh, in the track. So it's really difficult. Do the guys tend to spend a lot of time up out of the saddle, or unlike the motorcyclist, because it's four wheels, they have a slightly more comfortable ride? Or is that not the case? I don't think it's the case. No, I don't think uh, they, they tend to sit a lot more than the motorcyclists, but uh, it is a two-wheel drive, and you, uh, only the back wheels drive. So it's a live axle, which means you have to slide that bike around the corners. This is Christo von Amerva. As you see, the technique is very different to the cars. Uh, the bike is very short, okay, which means that if there was a steep bump, uh, bank down there, he would actually tipple in. He would sort of go to, um, end over end. You see, they're very cautious going into that water. Again, I can see the guy's putting a lot of weight on the back of the bike, shifting his whole body to the back there. All right, he's looking for some traction. Um, it's not always the right thing to do, but uh, you know the guys have their own techniques and they, they ride it as they feel. It's quite interesting that the quads can actually get stuck in a mud hole like that as well. They actually do float, those wheels uh, if that, if that bike was left on its own, it would float in the water. First into the pits, halfway round, 200 k's gone for the quads. Very well at this stage, quite tough. Um, hands are a little bit sore. I think everything's going well now. Only 200 k's to go. Onto the motorcycles and the two-wheelers, Kenny, I guess, best expresses the whole free-riding spirit of off-road racing. Yes, Glenn, but uh, you, these guys are really top-class athletes. They train unbelievably. They, they're in the gym. They're doing road work. And, uh, yeah, they're at top-class athletes. They're in that saddle for eight to ten hours a day. So, you know, some of the races, a thousand kilometers, they really are, they need to be fit. Also, there are different categories in these, with the motorcycles, uh, there's the open class, then they have a 250 class, and then they have the 200, so you can get in at any level, really, so which is, uh, which is fantastic, so if you want to start and you, you can't compete with the, the real top guys, you can get in, you can buy yourself a bike and enjoy it. Now we've seen already the water, the drinking water aspect and how crucial that is. Would the motorcyclist tend to go through a lot more fluid than a guy sitting in the seat of, a, of, of the cars, for example? Well, the bikes, uh, they have, if you look on their backs, they have like a camel back um, and they, halfway they would refill it. They would, the, depending on the, on the, on the person, but uh, they normally refill it at halfway and then they pace themselves so that they have three litres of water for 200 kilometres which is very important to keep really hydrated. See the different uh, styles of the riders? Some of the guys will be attacking the water, other guys are a lot more cautious. Here's Elmer Simons. He took it the right way. <laughs> You'll see now what's happened is the guys are very close together because they've actually got caught up in the dust and they tend to congregate and, and sort of uh, follow each other, which it, it does tend to get a bit hectic in the dust. Not that there's any here. That's always nice to know. If the bike gets stuck, you can always get off it and take the weight off it. You can't do that in a race cage. Okay, guys, let's all bail out and push, <laughs> although it does sometimes happen. <laughs> yeah, it does. But the bikes are... Uh, it's a fantastic form of motorsport. It's easy to ride. Everybody can do it. You need a bucky and a buck, basically, and you can get to the races. Here we go, halfway marker for the motorcycles. First man in. 
Alfie Cox, what can we say? Yeah, again, much like Vickers van Deva, to help me to glorify off-road racing because of his Paris Dakar exploits. Oh, most definitely. They brought off-road racing to the fore. People are now aware of what's happening. You see Alfie drinking here. Uh, it's unbelievable that what they've done for the sport. And with Neil and Bix, unfortunately, they had a problem, but the racing has really become, people have become aware of what's happening with off-road racing now. This is Errol Dalton, second into the pits. And as if the physical demands of riding out there for 200 k's at a time aren't hard enough, rehydration absolutely critical, and it really did affect one of the I riders. I pulled up to like eighth place again after dropping back like to 20th or 30th, and uh, I got to the second fuel point, and I just thought to myself, no, I could feel I was going to get sick, and I forgot a whole complete lap. So rather than destroy my body, I decided to, and I think you're going to find a lot of guys pulling out towards the end. On to the second lap of 200 kilometers. Let's get to specifics, Kenny. How are these guys doing? Well, this looks like it's uh, Harvey. They, 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 they're leading the race at this stage. They've managed to get Bart Pinoy and the rest of the guys have had a few problems. And Chepek hot on his heels. So it looks like this race is really developing. This is Api Reinecke, which means that he's right up there. Um, he's leading the production vehicles at this stage, a Class D car, which uh, is, is the ultimate in, in the production vehicles. With Derek Pinoy, quick fit, he, he told us he had a problem with the pits, and he's moving up. He's one of the, the quicker guys in the specials, one of the quickest drivers we have. Oh, here comes Neil Woolridge in the Pajero. Next year, uh, next race, he'll be in the Class D car as well, the, the Perry Deco car, which is now docked and uh, there'll be another driver in that vehicle. This is Bevan Bertolt. He's really moved up fantastically. This is his first race in his new car, so he's really, really done well. So here we are, a perfect example of how different the terrains are on this 200 kilometer route, Kenny. We've had plenty of dust, we've had rocky, watery section, now more the open terrain sections. Right. Well, uh, Glenn, I don't know about taking a bucky down there, a farm bucky down there at that speed, but uh, <laughs> up he's actually going. He's, he's ultra, com ultra competitive. He's really a superstar in this category. Really sharp, jagged, rocky terrain here as we get to the closing stages, Kenny. Well, it's coming towards the very close to the end of the race, so you really have to be careful that you don't get a puncher. This is our leader at this stage. He's on the home stretch, but you never can tell. Things do go wrong. It's not over till it's over. And Chepik right behind him. It looks like he's losing his, his uh, skid pan underneath. And this is Richard Carolyn. This is Obit. This is the guy that went through the water earlier. A little bit drier this time. It looks like a smooth cruise to the finish, but as you were saying, Kenny, anything can happen in the last few Ks. Most definitely, we have a saying in off-road racing, it's never over till it's over. So, uh, let's see what develops. Well, here's your overall winners. Now, this is Greg Harvey and Boy Stone. It's fantastic. This is their first national win. They've won the championship prior in 1995. And the local guys as well? The local guys are fantastic for the local guys. Really is fantastic. They've done a great job. Second overall, Franz Chepek, senior and junior, in the race car. And third overall, looks like Albert Carolyn in the lubrication equipment race car. Race car is first, second and third. That's fantastic. Coming into the pits after the first lap, um, we were lying fourth and our pit stop was quick and we went out first and from there we just kept the pace going and tried to keep everyone behind us. Yeah, it was very hot out there, uh, but uh, it wasn't too bad, quite demanding, on, uh, physically demanding uh, and very demanding mechanically as well on the vehicles, but uh, it all came together. So the classification for Class A, first home, Greg Harvey and Boy Stone in the race co in a terrific time of 5 hours, 32 minutes and 47 seconds. Class B, the winner, Bevan Bertholdt in the Gearbox Den race co, just over 6 hours and a minute for him. In Class C, Vili and Chantal Borain in the Sandmaster in 8 hours, 14 and 50 seconds. And in Class D, Arpi Reinecke and Robin Houghton, the Toyota Castrol dealer team, 5 hours, 50 minutes and 32 seconds. Neil Woolrich and Paul Vermark in the Mitsubishi Vodacom vehicle, 6 hours and 19 minutes. And in Class F, Theo Kutsier and In Wedderburn in the Chevrolet, 8 hours, 2 minutes and 8 seconds. Here come the quads, Kenny. Yeah, Christoph van is having a great run. Looks like he's got this one sewn up. 
be interesting to see once once Vikas is ready to race again how competitive the guys are together. So Christo, the winner by a long shot, in fact, uh, very much over 40 minutes or so, his winning margin you'll see there in the classification in the open class. Christo winning it on his Yamaha, 6 hours, 22.16, and that's quite a gap to second and third place. In the 200cc class for the quads, Cornell de Villiers in the Yamaha, winning it in 7 hours, 49.33. Just a few k's to go, the rocky section again at the end, and everybody waiting for the arrival of Alfie Cox. Right, yeah, you can see how much easier it is for the bikes to, to get down these mountains than a, than a vehicle that weighs a couple of tons. Alfie really just uh, lapping it up, and again, as we were saying earlier, it's almost like a cruise, this event, after Paris-Dakar. Yeah, well, here we have Daryl Curtis, who hopes to be in Dakar this year, and uh, I'm sure he'll do a sterling job as well. Clayton Insulin on the Kawasaki. But two wins out of two in the Takastart 400 for Alfie Cox in grueling conditions. Uh, it was hot. I make no mistake. I mean, I just finished my water about 10 k's from home. I've been saving it along the way. But uh, it's, it's the hottest we've ever had, had to ride in, I think. Second overall, Daryl Curtis and first in the 250 category. And a nice outing for him in this, the first off-road at the Barbastan 500 in Delareval coming up, of course, on the 21st of March. And Rion Fonica, first in the 200cc category. So the open class classifications, Alfie Cox, who else on the AGA Panasonic Castle KTM, 4 hours 58 and 1 second. And in the 250cc class, Daryl Curtis winning it on his AGA Panasonic Castle KTM, 5 hours 4.49. And Rian Fennikirk on the AGA Panasonic Castle KTM winning the 200cc class in 5 hours 21.32. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this coverage of the Takastart 400. And Kenny, as you said earlier, it's not over till it's over. Yeah, well, Neil's had a problem and he's got towed up to the line, not over it. And they're pushing the vehicle across the line so it finishes under its own power. And the course well set up? Excellent course. I think it's probably in the nine years or ten years that Neil and myself have been racing together probably the best course that I've driven or not driven navigated for it. It's excellent. It's got a bit of everything at the marking was excellent, organization, road crossing, everything was just perfect. So you had fun, fun in Parkistan? Yeah, yeah we'll definitely be back up.